Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnought's Taskmaster Tuesday. In Taskmaster Tuesday, I take on various other content creators, and we try to get the best score for the particular challenge of the week. This week, it's going to be a bit of a slot machine. We have to take a ship that gets designed by the AI. Now, um, that means we're going to have to click the Auto Design button, and if you don't like what you get, you can just recycle at the expense of five points. The enemy is going to be two battleships and 10 points can be had per, uh, per kill on the battleship. 10 heavy cruisers will escort these battleships and they will be valuable uh, or valuable. <laughs> They'll be valued at two points each. So there is a total of 40 points to be had if you kill all of it. But you do not have the capability of designing your ship and if you don't like what you get, you can say, you know what, I'm going to reroll at the expense of 5 points. Which means that if you sink all, your maximum score is going to be 35, and then 30, and then 25. And that is prerequisite on you killing everything. So it's going to be um, quite a lot of RNG this week. And that goes both ways. It's both for the ship that you get from the AI, and what sort of ship the AI generates for the French fleet which will be our opponent for the week. Now, there is the um, the free choice of ship class. If you really like to go with a destroyer, you can. But taking on 10 heavy cruisers with a destroyer would seem <laughs> uh, optimistic at best. And I am just going to go a cozy route of picking a battleship. You can also pick your own starting nation. This means that the British are out. I'm not going to pick the British because they don't have a very large hull. Um, the Chinese I'm not sure about. Let's pick the German Empire. The Germans and the French have had their fair score of a fair score of um, of disagreements, shall we say, naval and otherwise. So let's see what the AI builds. So design ship. Oh dear, here we go. Auto design. So the first one's free. If I go into battle with this ship, I um, can still get the maximum of 40 points. Now, what did I get on this thing? I'm looking at a main armament of 19 inch. Not terrible. Defended fairly well. Many bulkheads, <laughs> very long range. <laughs> Turbines, um, engine efficiency, 43%, yikes. Uh, okay, Group 4, Barbette 4, Anti-Torp 3, Citadel 5, even Shaft 3 and Aux 4, that's pretty good. Uh, we get a Generation 2 radar, Coincidence 4 range finding, Sonar 3, oh. <laughs> Standard loaders. Oh no, which means I fire every <laughs> I fire every 95 seconds. <laughs> okay, what else does she have? Because she comes equipped with more than just these 19 inches. Uh, six 8 inches, 18 dual 8 inches, and 48 3 inches. The 8 inch guns could be useful when it comes to dealing with the heavy cruisers. And there are quite a lot of them. I don't know how effective this turret's going to be. It's neatly tucked in between the C turret and the wing turrets here. But who knows, it might just be useful. Now I think that this is not actually a really bad roll. I think I'm just gonna have to pick this ship. Is there anything that I have overlooked that could be a threat? Belt armor is not great. Then again, against 19 inch or even 20 inch guns, barely any belt armor is going to be sufficient. Hmm. You know what, let's just try it. This is the Markgraf, and we're going to put her through the ringer as we see if she can take on two French ships, or two French battleships, and ten French heavy cruisers. Looks like the French battleships aren't that big. Am I mistaken? 
No, they're old dreadnoughts. Or modernized dreadnoughts, for that matter. With 9 15 inch guns. Oh, this is good. This is really, really, really good. This is where the RNG comes in, because I could have easily had ships which had three or four 19 inch quad barrels. But no such thing. And the heavy cruisers? Is that it? Is that what you consider a heavy cruiser these days? Six eight-inch guns, six six uh, sorry six three-inch guns and two two-inch guns. No visible torpedo launchers, but that doesn't say anything for underwater capability. I'm going to try and make mincemeat out of these guys. I just hope that I'm able to hit stuff. Um, what is this turning circle? That is not eight hundred meters. That turning circle. No. It doesn't even make sense. A turning circle, as far as I understand it, means how much do you need to do a 180 degree turn? Um, it says that I need 804 meters. The game effectively says, well, maybe you need three. Three kilometers. So that's not really that accurate. Anyway, let's have the Markov engage. I am a bow heavy battleship. So turning around is uh, going to be a priority. Slowing down might help. But then again, my engine and engine efficiency are so bad that I don't really have to do too much on the throttle because it won't make that much of a difference anyway. Accuracy is already almost 7%. That's good stuff. They are in a bit of disarray as they're all turning to port. Look at this guy zooming around. I wonder what sort of speed they can get up to. Because this looks like it's fast. Which would also explain why it doesn't have that much armament. The armament is just not, well, not placeable, if you will, because the ship has so much going into the engine. First hit, 217 damage. Two hits, in fact. And that was what? One of the dreadnoughts slash battleships. There are still some more other ships out there. Three and a half percent chance to hit only, though. Must be because we're turning. If I can bring these bow batteries to bear on the enemy, I think that that's the priority. If the stern can fire... It's a bonus. It's not really something that I'm trying to angle for. Because I would rather get closer and boost my accuracy that way than um, sail directly at them. Or, uh, no, cross the T, so just open up as much as possible and sail away from them. Because it looks like they already are sailing away. Or are they? Hold on, where's this cruiser going? You. No, they're not sailing away, they're coming my way. Another fire. Oh, that's the other dreadnought. So, if you guys are heading that way, I need to be turning to port. The 8-inch guns are working. Nice. I don't exactly know what the armor scheme is of this heavy cruiser yet, but we're pretty nicely on the way with identifying it. And with all of those 8-inch guns, we can throw out a hell of a lot of shells. And I should have plenty to deal with the enemy. Now, making a hard turn to port... Well, hard turn. <laughs> I'm turning to port to try and get closer to the enemy. As well as, once again, get the stern involved. Which should already start... Yeah, it's starting to turn around. Excellent. 1k damage done. A mere 36 damage taken. Really nothing that serious. But it looks like their ships, at least their big guys, are taking a pounding. I got really lucky here. I was very concerned that I was going to be fighting something really big and really powerful. But it seems like it's not quite the case. Ah, heavy cruisers have been identified. You see, 37 and a half knots. That's fast. Light shells. No underwater torpedo launchers. 
So their 8-inch shells can probably not do much. They have a whole 1.7% chance to pen. Jesus, that's terrible. We can stop the turn now. This is the battleship Ocean. Minimum bulkheads as well? Jeez. How did... Usually when I'm playing scenarios, I don't get anywhere near this kind of lucky. What's your chance to pen me with those fixed 15 inch... Yeah, 15 inch guns. Should be far better. 63%. See, they can definitely hurt me. That means they need to go first. It's, uh, it's Richelieu and Océan. They're both considered a threat. Uh, we got Foudroyant, uh, Cerberé, and Clébert over there. But so far, we're not really hitting them. Accuracy is fairly low at 1.8. There we go. But that barely made a scratch. 2% of structural integrity was lost. Now, the tiebreaker for this week, which means that if we all manage, or if multiple people manage to sink the ent uh, entire enemy fleet, is how much time that takes you. I'm chewing my way through one of their battleships, but the rest of them are still very much alive and kicking. So it's probably going to take me a good amount of time before I'm able to sink the entirety of the fleet. And again, it's really the priority to take those 15-inch guns out of play before they're capable of doing too much damage. With 939 shells, I should have plenty. Reduced ammo for torps, yeah, right, but we don't have any. Anti-flood 2... Structural is falling a bit. Nothing too dramatic. Richelieu was pretty heavily flooded and is once again performing a miracle with pumping the water back out. Croissants were promised for the first sailor to empty the compartment and it seems to be working. As the stern is already clear. Oh, it's now flooded again. <laughs> but the other parts, I swear I had more flooding than this. Range, still 22 kilometers. My structural's falling a bit, but nothing so damaging that I'm concerned about it. Heavy cruisers here. Wow, 4% and 2% on the Clubair. That's pretty dreadful. Ah, there we go. I think they're going to have to promise more croissants because Richelieu is deep in the water. 15%, 12%, you're going to have to motivate these sailors somehow. I'll throw in a pain au chocolat if you speed things up here. Nope. No pain au chocolat for you. Now, next big guy, Océan. Let's see how quickly we can put the Océan uh, beneath the Océan. Because this is the last of the 15-inch boats, and it has to go. She keeps... Oh, sometimes she shatters on my armor. But most of the damage that was done was 15-inch shells. The 8-inch are really just tickling and are not that much of a threat. The issue is, however, that it keeps heading away. All right, uh, I'm going to um, do some cruelty to small ships here. These cruisers have to get out of my way. I don't want them to stick around here uh, because I want to turn back that way. So they're going to have to sink. And in order to do that, we're going to throw some 19-inch problems their way. Chance to hit, 66%, 71%. That is massive amounts of damage on Kleber. She really took a big chunk of damage there. 1109, 108, almost 700, and she's dead. All right, let's make it a bit worse. We're gonna throw a high explosive at the Cerberi. 
<laughs> oui, oui. That one's gone. Foudroyant. You're next, buddy. Good night. <laughs> Structural integrity. <laughs> Just went from a hundred. No, sorry, not a hundred. From about ninety-five to four in one salvo. That's what you get when you fire at point blank range with high explosive against a heavy cruiser. Ho, ho, ho. No, we're not the French. We're targeting the French. So we're actually the uh, the Germans. But then again, the Germans don't have any. <laughs> they don't have any sense of humor, so I wouldn't know any good German jokes. Sorry, um, it's been a long day and uh, I'm quite tired. I hope you guys don't mind insulting various European nations at this point. I'm part of a European nation myself, so you know. Now, um, let's see if the Ocean can be put down. In the meanwhile, I'm closing in on the heavy cruisers, and I've spent 45 minutes doing this. Fire on the Furier. Bruy, Condé, Bouvine. There's the other heavy cruiser. I was wondering, where's the other two? No, actually, I sunk three. So there's four here. One, two, where's the, uh, where's the third? There, Tourville. Hasn't fired a single shot. Okay. So you're cool, buddy. But in the meanwhile, I am definitely demolishing your fleet. I'm not sure if I should stop firing at this range, because I'm not sure if I can hit them. I mean, I might be able to land the occasional shell, but... I want something a little better. So, we're just going to keep cruising towards the enemy, saving our 19-inch ammunition for a couple of very short-range bursts of damage against the Furieux and her assorting uh, division. Accuracy is currently going to be about 3%. So, I need something better than that. And the range is still 14 clicks. At 6 clicks, the fun begins. Because at 6 clicks, I can pretty much one-shot them if I load high explosive. Now, overall, I am taking a bit more damage, and once again, it's coming out of the 15-inch guns. The Ocean is more capable of hitting me. My chance to pen her is 92%. My chance to hit her, I... 8%, yeah, yeah see, it's still not that good. She still has plenty of shells left, so it's not like she's going to stop firing anytime soon. Hmm. Heavy cruisers, 11 clicks out. This one's 12-6, this one's 11-3. Turn to port. Fire. 9.5% chance to hit. I'm feeling a bit better about that. And 98.4% chance to pen. I really hope that these heavy crews are not going to keep running away from me. Because they are far better at that than I am. I can do 25 knots. Normally it would be 29, but I've taken some battle damage. And these boys can do 37 and a half. So they will run away from me if they can. Insert your French running away jokes here. 12% chance to hit. It's not bad to see a fire on the Ocean, but I would rather see flooding. You know, a bit more Ocean in the Ocean. In this case, by the way, I suppose that you could say that carrying water to the ocean is not such a bad idea. Since she was burning. God, the amount of dad jokes in this one's terrible. Mm. Oh, no matter, I'm going to leave them in. Alright, move in. Target, move in. 19 inch guns. Au revoir. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. 
Yeah, there she goes. New target, Colin Day. Heavy cruiser Bouvin sunk. Not to be mistaken with the French sunk, which would mean five. Margraf. Come on. Oh, you got lucky there. Not any kind of evasive action from the Condé. Which is her prerogative, but it's potentially also her downfall. There she goes. 2900 damage. Next target, Bruy. Where's the battleship? Still 17 clicks out. I feel a bit like a sheepdog with the Margraf because I have to go after the targets here and then turn all the way around and just shepherd the other targets back together. That was one shell. One 19 inch shell for 1573 damage. And the ship is suffering extensive fire. Yeah, you could say that again. Have my 3-inch guns done anything? No, oh, 58 damage. As opposed <laughs> to the 19-inch guns at almost 18,000. Damage taken, 880... Sorry, 838. Not that bad. Prepare. What are we targeting? Hello, 19-inch guns. We have a target on our bow. We have a French cruiser that needs removal. Turn, 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 turn. Missed. Missed. Because that was just an 8-inch hit. 70% chance to hit. But I'm turning all the way away from the French battleship. Come on. There you go. <laughs> 3,600 damage. No, you cannot engage my French ship and knock it out in one below. Haha, <laughs> Margraf goes boom. It's that simple. This thing looks a bit scorched, but it's still functional, fortunately. Now, that leaves us with three heavy cruisers. Somewhere on the other side of the planet. And a battleship. This is going to take a while. Let's head over there as quickly as the ship will go, which is still a little under 25 knots. This is going to cut into my time, which for the tiebreak could be problematic. Hold on, have I lost... No, I haven't lost the battleship. I still carry 729 shells, so I'm just going to keep firing, even though I have less accuracy than I really want to have. The 8 inch, 325, 477, 143, 21,500. To be fair, if those 19 inch guns go off once, that's usually enough to sink one heavy cruiser. Ah, we got him. Um, overpen, though. It's probably not going to cause a flooding, is it? Because she's on fire, but I really want to flood her. Slow her down, sitting duck, finish her off. Oh, she stopped firing. Because she's starting to run a little lower on ammunition. Okay, it's even better. Twenty-four clicks out. Accuracy still only six, and dropping actually. Can these things super fire? A and B can't. C turret can. So I'm probably launching. Yeah, I'm firing shells only from B and C. I think. Ho, 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 ho. Merry Christmas, Ocean. You just took some massive flooding. Another flooding? That could kill her. Yes, done. Well done. Cease fire. We are going to get closer to the last surviving heavy cruisers. Which is at least the Boule Dog and Leon Gambetta. But there is a third one. And I don't like the Margraf pinging something over there. Even over there. Ah, oh, fuck me. 
Holy shit, where are you? 32 kilometers away. Okay. Well, we'll chase them down, I guess. And then in the meanwhile, get these two. Let the 8-inch guns just uh, open up already. Wow, and hit them even. It's pretty impressive. Now at this range, I'm probably hitting their deck armor. So that would mean that I'm trying to pen how much armor? Deck, 2.7. 2.7. And my ship, with my 8-inch shells, when I'm flying through the deck armor, can do 2.7 at 10 kilometers. I'm currently fighting beyond that at almost 16 clicks. So I should be able to pen their deck. If it actually goes through the deck, that is. The Gambetta is still... still full ammo. The AI could use a bit more work when it comes to sending out their ships more aggressively. Where's that other guy going? 29 clicks. We're closing on him. Just start heading in that direction already. High explosive, please. Because armor piercing at 19 inch with white powder? I imagine it flies out the other side. With the amount of uh, firepower that we're delivering on the bullet, uh, bullet dog. Come on. Ooh, beautiful. One hit on the bow. Ship's immediately flooding. Probably slowing down dramatically. Yeah, pretty good. 29.3. Engine damaged. Anti-flood? Anti-flood 3. They can pump it back out. And they're doing it. Engine 3 keeps getting damaged and then repaired. But the damage is done. The ship has been slowed down from halfway to 35 knots. To... Sorry, 37.5 knots to a mere 22 knots making her far more of an easy target. And there's the last ship that I need to sink after these two are done. The Tourville. I need to engage those. Speed, 16 and a half knots and still losing speed. 15 knots, 14 half, 14 knots. Come on, that should wipe her off the face of the earth. No, it didn't. Oh. Would have been so nice. I'm already one hour and 45 minutes in. This is not going to do well for me for time. So I can only hope that the other contestants didn't... There we go. Didn't do that well. Got worse ships. Got worse opponents. Let's... <laughs> let's hope. Accuracy is currently still building up. 10%. I'll take it. Because I only need to get lucky once to slow it down. If I get lucky twice, I blow it away. To reveal 17 clicks. I'm not sure where she's not... Oh, she is doing full speed. Oh, crap. But she's, like, crossing my T. Not sure why I'd want to do that. Oh. Come on. Eleven percent chance. There we go. Destroyed the main gun. It's a good first nice chunk of damage with the 19 inch. I was really hoping for an engine damage. Because she's still doing high speed at 36 knots. Which is probably my biggest detractor from her accuracy, yeah. Target fast speed is minus 47.9. So that is very much the limiting factor here. Now the Margrave has taken her fair beating. But, so far, no critical damage. Everything is still good. All components are operational. 
Weapons are functioning. So I have very little to worry about. If the French had equipped their heavy cruisers with 5 to 10 torpedo launchers per side per ship, this would have been an entirely different battle. But thankfully, they didn't. And now they're paying the price for it. The Leon Gambetta getting hit, sinking just mere, well, I think seconds later. I'm going to start keeping an eye on the time now. I think we're going to be doing this maybe in two hours. Nope, miss. With a 90 second reload. It's very easy to waste a whole lot of shells and a whole lot of time while you're doing it. 802. Chance to hit 8%. Come on. No. Just one fire from an 8 inch gun. We're going to pass the 8 hour mark. Come on. What was that dispersion? We've done significantly better than that before. Tourville, how fast are you running? 37.2. So she's maxing out. I can't do that. But this looks good. Yes! Tourville. Last French heavy cruiser sunk. 7.58.06. 7.58.06. So, job done. And I gotta say, uh, for an AI designed ship, this thing performed really, really well. I really wonder how the other guys did. Uh, linked down below are their attempts, so be sure to check them out. Subscribe to them if you haven't already, and if you are new to this channel, then please subscribe to me as well. And um, let me know if you have any good Taskmaster challenges down below in the comment section. Thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you soon for another video.